Good afternoon, everyone. And the first item of business this afternoon is a member's business debate on motion number 11565 in the name of Annabel Ewing on St Andrew's Day 2014. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I now call on Bruce Crawford to open the debate on behalf of Annabel Ewing. Uh, Mr Crawford, seven minutes or thereby, please. Okay. Thank you, President Officer. Um, can I begin just by obviously congratulating Annabel Ewing on becoming a minister in the Scottish Government um, and thanking all of those who have signed the motion, those who have turned up to the debate at this moment, um, but also to thank Annabel Ewing for creating an opportunity for me to lead the debate on celebrating St Andrew's Day. And my contribution, I particularly want to reflect on Scotland's place in the world. As stated in the motion, St Andrews himself was a man who touched many countries. Of course, the obvious countries with which Scotland has links lies with our friends in the Commonwealth countries across the world. It was in the Commonwealth countries that many of our forebears chose to make new lives for themselves in the more recent past and, of course, vice versa. But Scotland also has centuries-old relationships with our Scandinavian neighbours, with Poland, Germany and the Netherlands. Uh, Scots emigrated in numbers to these countries, mainly in search of economic or military careers, whilst many, as we know, from those countries also settled here. So again, so again it was the same for our neighbouring countries across these islands, and again it was vice versa. And similarly across the world, in more contemporary times, in first maritime and then air travel, we have witnessed Scotland take her place as part of a smaller and more independent world. And we know that in more recent times there have been people come to enrich our society, whether that has been the Italians and the Poles of the past or people from Pakistan and India, etc. as well. And develop our place in the modern world as a result of the many links that we have around the globe, we have become a much more ethnically rich and diverse country. This has helped us retain, I believe, a unique and outward looking culture. Now, I think everyone would agree, and it goes without saying, that 2014 has been a year like no other to celebrate all that is good about Scotland. A referendum was a magnificent renewal of Scotland's national democracy with an enormous turnout and truly incredible levels of democratic engagement from our citizens. And I was, happened to be in Fort William earlier on this week with the Further Devolution um, Powers Committee, and we had the chance to speak to many 16 and 17 year olds who were involved in that democratic process. And there's no doubt in my mind that what we've heard from the Smith Commission, for example, this week, and from all the parties in Parliament now that we recognise and value that, that these young people's contribution as part of the referendum process. And I'm glad that everyone's committed now to giving 16 and 17 year olds a vote in our country. But that referendum you know, was a spectacle. It was watched in awe across the world. This week, the journalist Jack Wright wrote in his View from Scotland's column for the excellent addition to Scotland's new daily newspaper titles, The National, that our brand is stronger than ever in the United States, as he commented on the newfound interest in Scotland and our politics. But it's more than just that, of course. We have welcomed visitors in this second year of homecoming from all over the world. I met many of them at Bannockburn event myself, succeeded in organising and delivering the best Commonwealth Games ever, as well as the magnificent spectacle that was the World Cup. And of course, we've had a wide range of cultural events in which to reflect upon and commemorate this year for Scotland. For instance, the historical heritage of our country that included the hugely successful marking of the 700th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn. But the Commonwealth Games in particular presented a golden opportunity to celebrate the diversity of family of nations and, and what the Commonwealth represents and the diversity to be found now in modern Scotland. Indeed, the former First Minister's description of the diversity of modern Scotland put it elegantly. There are many different colours and threads woven into the Scottish tartan, and we celebrate them all. 
I wholeheartedly agreed with these sen sentiments. And it is the richness of that tartan is reflected in the analysis work done for the 2011 census. Dr Andrew Smith, the senior lecturer in sociology at University of Glasgow said, what our research in the Centre on Dynamics of Ethnicity reveals is a picture of growing diversity within Scotland and of diversity spread across different areas of the country. He added, what the analysis also reveals is that Scotland's growing diversity is not producing polarised islands of different groups, but a mosaic of differently mixed areas. These findings are very reassuring, presiding officer, in modern Scotland, but there is no room for complacency in this chamber or indeed in Scottish society in a wider general sense. We must always strive to ensure that a diversity of the society is celebrated and never something to divide us. Now, as well as modern Scotland being about those from elsewhere who made their home here in our country, Scots have left these shores for opportunity, have made a huge contribution to the modern world. Now, the USA and Canada are off-cited examples where millions can lay claim to Scottish ancestry. Indeed, it's estimated that from this wee country of ours, about 20, between 28 and 40 million people may be able to claim Scottish descent. And I was intrigued to discover uh, recently that actually there are 80,000 people in Chile claim um, Scottish descent. I couldn't understand that number. It's more than many other European countries put together. But I discovered it was mostly about sheep and about an admiral who went to Chile to create the Chilean Navy from Scotland. And forgive me, I can't remember his name. Would the member give way? Yes, I'm sure John Mason is now going to tell me his name. John Mason. No, uh, I thank the member for giving way. When he mentions other countries, I was just wondering if he would uh, comment or if he realises the connection with Jamaica, uh, which also has a saltire as, uh, in its flag, and uh, it was Scots that were involved there, and there's a huge number of Scottish names in Jamaica. And it's the same. Mr. And, and obviously, I recognise that, although it's a yellow um, saltire that goes through the flag of Jamaica, but when you go further south, of course, we also come into places like um, Guinea, where there are lots of Scots went along in terms of the in, in, during the times of the sugar plantation. So Scots have a significant contribution in that part of the world. It's a pity that the bobslayers from Jamaica are better than our bobslayers. Um, I was reminded yesterday by my American intern, Heidi Brown, that Thanksgiving Day is being celebrated in the United States as we speak. This national holiday gives families a day off to rejoice in the cooperation between Native Indians, or sorry, Native Americans and the pilgrims during that period. And Americans mark this day by feasting, as they did after the first successful harvest in 1621, as well as giving thanks to the continued tradition of expressing gratitude to na Native Americans. I want to therefore conclude my remarks um, by wishing Americans here in Scotland a happy Thanksgiving Day on their national holiday. The motion to which I speak also advocates the celebration of St Andrew's Day as a national holiday. Now, I have no doubt it is not beyond our wit to designate St Andrew's Day a national holiday and rearrange our calendar of public holidays to reflect this, if that is what we choose. And, President Officer, as I close, if there was ever a good reason to celebrate St Andrew's with a public holiday, it would be to celebrate Scotland's contribution to the world. But even more importantly, to celebrate and to raise a toast from those from all around the planet who have chosen Scotland as their home, enriching our culture and our daily lives. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. I now call on Christine Graham to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Four minutes or thereby, please. I like the thereby, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. I congratulate Bruce Crawford on congratulating Annabel Ewing in this debate, celebrating St Andrew's Day and our patron saint in Scotland also, not just of Jamaica, but Greece, Romania, Russia and some others. I'm good to see Jamie McGregor in the chamber. I know he'll be speaking later, speaking from the Conservative benches. But I have to say, Deputy Presiding Officer, I have to remark in the fact there's nobody on the Labour benches, nobody on the Liberal benches to, to speak to the motion celebrating Scotland's national National Day, pretty disgraceful. Raising the profile of our National Day is undoubtedly due in this part to this Parliament reconvening some 15 years ago, and not least to Dennis Canavan's Act, the St Andrew's Day Bank Holiday Scotland Act of 2007, though it's not a full national holiday, as Bruce Crawford's alluded to, and not as celebrated yet as, for example, Burns Night.
Google at one time displayed the saltire on its homepage on St Andrew's Day. I hope it does it this year. I would suggest that those members who are not in the chamber, and that's most of them, will pay attention and suggest to Google that the St Andrew's flag is on the Google page on the 30th November. It's good business for Scotland and it's appropriate. St Andrew gave us the saltire and flags are at the beating heart of a nation. It is symbols of nationhood such as our patron saint and the flag emblematic of his crucifixion that have carried the heart and the hopes of Scots in good and bad from the confrontations on football pitches to those on battlefields. Where is that symbol of our patron saint more distinct than in our flag, the Saltire, which was inspired by the vision at Athel Stainford in 832 AD, or wasn't it there, where King Angus, Angus is my oldest son's name, there's DNA for you, Angus led the Scots in battle to defeat the Angles. The night before battle, St Andrew appeared before King Angus, assuring him of victory. And in the morning, a white saltire against a blue sky appeared to both sides. It scared the Angles to bits. They lost confidence and were defeated. And that has been our image ever since. The saltire was also used in the nation's coinage when it was introduced by King David I in the 13th century. It therefore has an ancient and noble lineage. On St Andrew's Day in our capital city, however, that is the opportunity to fly the St Andrew's flag prominent position over the castle. Why not? Why is it not flying over the castle? There is a false argument that the castle is an army garrison. It is not. It ceased to be a garrison in 1920, and the army is now there largely in a ceremonial capacity. And I'm thankful that Historic Scotland saw the light last year and didn't put Olympic uh, rings on it. But I have a suggestion. Why not project a large saltire on the ramparts of the castle for November the 30th? In commemoration of St Andrew's Day, his flag may fly over Edinburgh Castle. It may or may not, but not in pole position, as I've said. But the British government, on behalf of the Ministry of Defence, designated it as an official flag-flying station. The Union flag, therefore, takes precedence yet by the Scotland Act 1998 and by agreement between the Crown Estate Commissioners and the Scottish Office ownership of Edinburgh Castle and other historic buildings transferred from the Crown to the Secretary of State for Scotland and hence to the Scottish Ministers. The transfer of 26 properties took place in 1999. Fact. They included Inter Alia Edinburgh Castle. The government, through its ministers, now the owners, therefore the landlords to the MOD. The MOD is merely our tenant. Well, it's time for the landlords, on behalf of the Scottish people, to tell the tenants to take down the union flag and fly the saltire in its place. Not only because it symbolises our nation and its patron saint, but because, frankly, if it's good enough for recruiting Scots to fight in the legal wars, it's good enough to fly all the year round. And we know that despite the narrow miss of independence, or perhaps because of it, because of those 1.6 million Scots who voted yes in the face of a unionist tsunami of negativity, and the now baby steps taken under the Smith Commission, and substantial and cohesive and home rule have all been redefined, and we now know the definition of a vow, we all know, wherever side you are in this parliament, that Scotland's story has not yet been told that ending remains unwritten, and then the saltire will fly everywhere. Many thanks. I now call on Jamie McGregor to be, after which, move the closing speech from the Minister. Uh, th thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, referring to Christine Graham's remarks earlier, I'm too as I'm astonished as nobody from the Labour benches. Oddly enough, there was nobody during the Ukrainian debate other the, the other day, which I thought was rather odd. Perhaps they've all been rendered speechless by something. Um, and I congratulate Annabel Ewing on securing today's debate, and I'm very glad to take part in it, because it's important. Um, and um, Christine told the story of the, the Scottish Saltire and the legend of St Andrew, which I was about to tell you, so that's taken away some of my speech. But I have to say, I was very glad to learn that it was St Andrew whose dream inspired the Saltar. It's a beautiful flag owned by all the Scottish people. And of course, it's part of the Union Jack as well. Quite why St Andrew's was considered to be the end of the earth, where St Rule was instructed to take St Andrew's remains, is a mystery to me, as I've always considered it a very fine town with a great university and a, a marvellous golf course. But perhaps St Rule arrived on a bad day 
um, which was made worse by a har or something like that. But he was lucky to get away with his life, unlike the Hussites who arrived at this one stage from, the Czech, from Czechoslovakia, uh, who were burnt at the stake in St. Andrews. But anyway, um, what celebrations St. Andrew has inspired worldwide, uh, particularly in Australia and Canada, uh, and, and, and in China, the, the Caledonian Society of Beijing, of which my brother was a previous chairman, uh, holds a St. Andrew's ball where an enormous amount of Scotch whiskey is consumed. Um, the Czech Republic, uh, where the Hussites I spoke of reasonably came from, um, uh, amazingly hold a, a, a St. Andrew's night as well, which is very forgiving of them, I think. And, and in um, Saudi Arabia, they hold a St. Andrew's night ball in Jeddah, but I'm not so, I don't think quite so much whiskey is drunk at that one. Um, turning to, I suppose, slightly more serious matters, during my time as an MSP, I've spoken in many debates on St. Andrew's Day, and I argued before our position on making the day a full national holiday has been consistent and clear, and we've always been supportive of the desire to have St. Andrew's Day as a bank holiday, but in exchange for another day, and not in addition to existing days. This was the approach adopted in the 2007 Act, and we remain supportive of that. St. Andrew's Day is correctly a voluntary public holiday, and this is what has happened. It is also what our Parliament does. Strangely enough, Eton College also celebrates St. Andrew's Day as a, a, a holiday, and has done so for hundreds of years. We didn't support the argument that St. Andrew's Day must be a compulsory national holiday, as the cost of this inevitably falls on businesses, especially small businesses, and the taxpayer. CBI Scotland has in the past stated that more and more firms are moving, in a moment, um, moving away um, from closing on specified days towards a system where employees have an annual leave entitlement and decide for themselves, in agreement with their employer, when to take a holiday. And we would be happy for employees to engage with their employers to discuss taking St Andrew's Day off instead of another holiday if this was appropriate, as it might be the case if the employee's spouse or partner or children have St Andrew's Day off. Yes, I'll take an intervention. Briefly, because the member's in his last minute. Sorry, thank you, presiding officer. Um, I just thought, I wondered if you th would think that the retail sector might actually benefit from a holiday at this time of year because it could boost sales leading up to Christmas? Jimmy McGregor. Well, it's a good point well made. Um, I, I, it is a good point. I agree with the motion that St Andrew's Day is a great opportunity to celebrate the diversity of our cultures and faiths. And we also recognise that tourism businesses can need extra promotion during the winter months, which is what my friend there was talking about. And we want to see a continued focus to boost winter tourism in Scotland. And I'm pleased that Historic Scotland offered free tickets to many of their properties on St Andrew's Day. And I paid tribute to all those enterprising businesses, shops and tourism enterprises in my region, the Highlands and Islands, who seek to use St Andrew's Day to boost the trade. As a keen angler myself, I've always thought it was very appropriate that our Scottish patron, St Andrew, was a fisherman from Galilee. And uh, I wish all of those who do have Friday off at St Andrew's Day that they have an enjoyable day and hope some of them will do a spot of fishing or even enjoy some of our first-class shellfish in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. And we now move to the closing speech from Minister Humza Yousaf. Seven minutes or thereby, please, Minister. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I want to congratulate Annabel Ewing uh, for bringing this forward, and then uh, I want to congratulate her, of course, on her ministerial appointment and uh, as a colleague in government, uh, but also want to congratulate Bruce Crawford for taking up the mantle uh, somewhat last minute. And uh, I could think of no MSP more appropriate uh, to have done so. I'm delighted uh, to be winding up this debate on behalf of the government. I, too, am surprised at the lack of some opposition uh, members here. But nonetheless, today's uh, members' debate about St Andrew's Day being celebrated widely uh, as a national holiday uh, is incredibly uh, important for a number of uh, different reasons. But I particularly want to pick up the point that Bruce Crawford and latterly uh, Jamie McGregor mentioned about this being an opportunity to celebrate Scotland as an outward-looking nation uh, that uh, where Scots have travelled the world over, sometimes for good reasons, sometimes, I would suggest, when it comes to Jamaica, uh, probably not for particularly great reasons, but also a country uh, that has opened itself up uh, to migrants and been a welcoming country uh, in that regard. Uh, St Andrews, uh, St Andrew was the patron saint, uh, uh, as was alluded to by Jamie McGregor, of uh, fishermen, fishmongers, 
Uh, and I'm certainly not looking at any members of this chamber, particularly behind me uh, at all, when I say that he was also the patron saint of singers, of spinsters, of maidens, of old maids, uh, women wishing to become mothers, and perhaps a good thing for, poli <laughs> a good thing for politicians, uh, also the patron saint uh, for sore throats uh, as well. Uh, and since the, it's been seven years, presiding officer, since the Scottish Parliament approved the bill to have a national holiday uh, on or around St Andrew's Day. And as you know, since then, as has been mentioned, the uh, Scottish Government and public sector organisations such as Visit Scotland uh, observe that holiday. Uh, many local authorities do, but we hope more uh, will take up that challenge uh, and, and indeed the opportunity, as John Mason said, uh, to take uh, that, hol that day as a, the, the holiday. Uh, you'll also be pleased uh, to hear that we've gathered some encouraging evidence that suggests St Andrew's Day uh, celebration is gathering momentum. Uh, for example, in 2013-14, the Scottish Winter Festival's events recorded a total footfall of uh, 257,884. That's an 8% increase uh, on the footfall the year before. And also the number of private sector organisations offering free or discounted entry uh, on St Andrew's Day has increased 140% uh, between 2012 uh, and 2013. Uh, going back to Bruce Crawford's remarks uh, about the global Scottish diaspora, it reminded me of a saying uh, that is often, uh, you, you will have heard many a time, I'm sure, that there's two types of people in the world, uh, Scots and those who wish they were Scottish. And it's estimated that in that vein, that there's uh, 50 million people across the globe who claim Scottish ancestry. Many of these Scots uh, and Scots at heart, uh, wherever they're from in the world, uh, from Beijing uh, to Rio to Toronto to Brisbane, uh, will be remembering uh, and marking the National Day as they do Hogmanay, uh, as they do Burns Night uh, every year. People quite correct uh, to mention that St Andrew was also, is also the patron saint of many other countries, Greece, Russia, Romania, and indeed uh, apparently Barbados, uh, which is fantastic. And although ex external affairs still comes into my remit, uh, presiding officer, and if the members of the chamber would want me to, and if I have to submit myself to the country to go on a fact-finding mission to Barbados in this regard, then of course I'm more than happy uh, to do that. Uh, we are uh, very much also working uh, with our partners across the world to try to establish St Andrew's Day as uh, an important day uh, to mark. I'm delighted that uh, we're working closely with the FCO, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, to promote the celebration of St Andrew's Day. I was having a, a Twitter exchange with the High Commissioner uh, of Zambia, James Thornton, uh, who was at the Caledonian Ball uh, to celebrate St Andrew's Day just this week. And many examples also given by uh, Jamie McGregor. And we're delighted uh, that they are doing all they can, uh, and we are doing all we can across the world uh, to promote St Andrew's Day, uh, and as, as well as members here who will be celebrating in their local constituencies. Now, as the motion uh, for this debate states St Andrew's Day uh, is also an opportunity to celebrate diversity of cultures, faiths and ethnic origins uh, of this small country. And I thought Bruce Crawford uh, made that point throughout his speech uh, extraordinarily uh, well. Uh, during this year in particular, uh, through all the events that we've had, including of course the Commonwealth Games in particular, uh, we've uh, managed to bring those communities, I think, of Scotland closer together. St Andrew's, uh, St Andrew himself, of course, was an immigrant. I emigrated and travelled to many different countries, Ukraine, Romania, uh, Russia, uh, Greece, Turkey, uh, amongst just a few. But one of the programme of events that helps to celebrate that ethnic diversity on St Andrew's Day, uh, I think this year, uh, is a fantastic event that's called the Multicultural Homecoming, uh, being organised by Bemis Scotland, uh, uh, headed by the very able uh, Rami Ouster, uh, Dr Rami Ouster uh, and his team. Uh, and that homecoming celebration uh, uh, is the finale of that homecoming celebration is on uh, St Andrew's night and the Cabinet Secretary for Culture and External Affairs will be representing the Scottish Government. I myself uh, will be that day uh, celebrating St Andrew's Day with our vibrant Sikh community uh, in Scotland. Uh, as we enter that, uh, this winter festival season, it's important to remember that St Andrew's Day isn't the only, uh, isn't the only uh, celebration of these winter months. We have a fantastic programme uh, with Hogmanay uh, a month later and then, as I say, uh, Burns as well. I thought some of the ideas that came from the Chamber uh, on how we can celebrate it uh, further and, and give St Andrew's Day more prominence uh, were very good ideas indeed. Uh, I think Christine Graham uh, has managed to volunteer herself with uh, the saltire in her teeth to climb the ramparts, the ramparts of uh, Edinburgh Castle uh, to attach it 
uh, on there. Uh, but uh, she says if I get her the flag, she'll do it. So I will certainly get her the flag, but I'll also get a photographer uh, on site to capture that moment. Uh, on, on a very serious note on her point, I know that when I was in uh, Stirling Castle uh, most recently, uh, the First Minister, the former First Minister, I should say, uh, had managed to secure the line rampant flying for that for the, only the second time uh, in 400 years. So I'm more than happy to explore the idea uh, that she suggests, uh, and indeed even the idea uh, with Google uh, to find out if they will be uh, uh, advocating the salt tyre uh, on their page as well. So I'm more than happy uh, to ensure that we do that. Uh, Presiding officer, uh, it's my hope that uh, our 2015 year of food and drink uh, will sustain and build on the momentum generated uh, by this year's homecoming uh, and that all of the, the chamber will be impelled uh, to take part, helping to inspire the people of Scotland and our visitors to celebrate Scotland's outstanding uh, natural larder, to further develop Scotland's ever-growing reputation as a land of food and drink and to promote and celebrate our nation's culinary achievements, uh, not just uh, on St Andrew's Day, uh, but throughout the year. And perhaps the last thing uh, I would say is that there's a lesson in St Andrew's story uh, for every single uh, one of us. Uh, he was a man of great uh, humility, uh, as demonstrated even in death and persecution, uh, when he refused to be uh, crucified in the same cross as Christ. Uh, so there are many lessons uh, that we can learn uh, in St Andrew's, but I think the best lesson, uh, as was said by Bruce Crawford, is that this is the national day that should be celebrated by all of Scotland's communities, but also all Scots, uh, who have chosen to make other parts of the globe uh, their home. And I hope in that uh, spirit of unity uh, and that spirit of diversity uh, and that spirit of tolerance that each and every one of us has a very happy and enjoyable and festive St Andrew's Day indeed. Thank you, Minister. That ends members' business. As the parties were so advised, we are moving straight on to uh, the continuation of the